Something's going to happen. Something wonderful. G'day fans and welcome to another exciting episode of the show. It's sunny outside, it's wonderful, we should all be outside, but no, straight away, Michelle's in. Angie's usually the first one who gets his nose in, but Michelle's picked him at the post. There you go. How about that? Not only is this episode 30, can you believe it? We've done this 30 times this year, this particular show. How scary is that? 30, oh my God. But uh, it's also... (laughs) Our second last one. So we finish everything up next week. So you have to make sure that you tune into that. So this is uh, something that actually Spankin uh, discussed or asked this question months ago. And we only sort of just covered off briefly in one of our things. And then recently Colin sent me through a message uh, highlighting a similar issue. So a lot of people are sort of touching on this these days. And it's to do with um, the future of movies and oh here we go jeffro look at that yeah woohoo well done well oh, done thank you everybody loves him so there you go um that actually marks jeffro's final official presentation too for the show so there you go um about the future of movies and tv shows and how they're going to be released and received and all the rest of it now it's kind of funny if you look at it historically from an historical perspective go way back films once before tv Films only ever got shown in cinemas and it was all great and wonderful. Then TV came along and all of a sudden the film companies realised that people weren't going to the movies. They were now watching everything on TV. So how do you fix the problem? Easy. You make movies bigger, better. You invent cinemascope, widescreen, big sound, the whole bit. Drags everybody back to the cinema again, right? So TV is just four by three. Cinemascope's nice and wide. The world is good. You get into the 80s and then sort of like video is starting to make an appearance and there was this big fear is like oh people aren't going to watch go to the movies or watch tv they're just going to watch videos so mm. you know there was a bit of a saga then and you know, like, all a bit of a panic going on so movies got bigger again and tv shows got more you know productive i suppose and video just did what video did and then of course i think it was in the late 80s early 90s foxtel came into play all these channels you can subscribe to them it's all great you can pick whatever you want and you get all this crap you didn't want either uh and then you can watch all these shows you know commercial free absolutely fantastic pay a certain fee And you're often running. Everybody remembers the sci-fi channel when it came out. It was the Ants Pants. But not everybody had Foxtel. So uh, that was that. And, of course, we got into DVD and Blu-ray and yada, yada, yada. Now a new iteration of the world is coming to play. And, of course, you could argue that uh, if you want to be very cynical about these things, that the streaming service companies um, got in league with, you know, some dudes in China who said, create a virus, everybody has to stay home, and that will encourage people to watch our products. And ironically, I find that Foxtel, when it first came out, it was like 80 bucks, 90 bucks a month, and people are um, um, the nard over it. But these days, because people have to subscribe to so many streaming services, if they want all this stuff, they're almost paying the same amount as they did for Foxtel. And uh, and streaming services have become the thing. And then I know there's a very divisive line, divisive line between those who like them and, uh, and, and for what they are and those who still prefer to stick with a hard-coded media which is dvd slash blu-ray what do you guys think in terms of like a next year or two what do you think is going to happen in regards to the streaming service revolution it, either one of you two can start i mean it's just the way of the future and um it's it's only going to get uh, more and more crowded out mm. there so I mean, it would have been nice if, you know, Netflix ruled them all and basically we just had the one subscription and everything we ever wanted was on Netflix. But unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. So, you know, um, people are really going to probably lose track of all the uh, subscriptions they've got. I saw an interesting one the other day where someone subscribed to KO because they wanted to see one particular uh, sporting event and then because they were overseas... And then they forgot about it and they basically been paying a year's worth of subscription for something that they only really needed while they were overseas. So, you know, you can really lose track of how much money that you are going to spend. And, yeah, it's funny when you want to see The Mandalorian, but you don't want to see any of the other Disney crap. So, mm. you know, you've got to pay that $6.99 to be able to sort of see it. So, uh, and they were very clever. They showed an episode once a week so you couldn't actually really binge watch it straight away like a lot of uh netflix shows i'll drop the whole bundle in one hit so uh 
uh, people would subscribe, do the 30 days, end the trial period, wouldn't have to pay anything. So it's, it's, um, it's, I don't watch uh, terrestrial TV anymore. That's really sad. So, you know, for me, it's uh, either the, um, the streaming services or, or YouTube. Yeah, there's a, a guy, I'll get to you in a second, Pierce. There's a friend that we know, uh, his TV aerial broke like three or four months ago. And then he discovered he didn't need to get it fixed because he doesn't watch anything free to wear anymore. Um, and I guess TV is TV. It'll have its place in the world. I guess it's the movies that are the more that have more to lose if streaming takes over and becomes as prevalent as it appears to be. MPS, what do you think, man? Well, look, I I have a couple of streaming services. I watch TV. I record a lot of TV because I bypass the commercials. Uh, and that includes even movies, movies that I haven't seen. What did I watch the other week? That was it was something I, I watched for the first time the other week because I hadn't seen it before. So I recorded it and skipped through all the commercials, and, and that was great. Um, in terms of putting a feature film on a streaming service, it comes down to your home media. So this year they trialled it with um, Mulan, and I think that was a dismal fail for Disney because you couldn't see it in the cinema so they said here you can watch it on disney but we're going to charge you 30 bucks now you're paying more to see that at home than you are in the cinema and you've got a limited period i think it's 24 hours to or 48 hours to watch it and 24 hours to watch it once you started it which means you don't actually have it and i think for that the cost is too high you know uh if you forget about it start it, whatever the case is and you've lost 30 bucks and you know you sort of don't get that back at all for any reason they want to do the, the similar sort of thing with Wonder Woman on, on Boxing Day where mm. they drop it in the cinema here and streaming. And look, to be honest, I think if they do the price of $30 again, you're better off just going to the cinema because you need that big experience because it's a big film. A film like those, you know, even Mulan, if you're watching um, mm. Jerry Maguire, for instance, you don't need to see that at the cinema. There's no special effects. There's no big time action sequences or anything like that but you know avatar any of the sci-fi uh films you know uh you could even throw game of thrones up there because it's just the epic <clears throat> nature of it and i think that's what we're going to miss with having these things in our home because our tvs are just going to have to get bigger and cope with more data coming through on the screen so you're going to see more like you do on the cinema um yeah um, there's a very good comment from Claire, actually, uh, even though it's, it's Mulan, not Milan. But um, the thing is that you're talking about it's cheaper to go and see it in the cinema, but that's for one person. If you've got a whole family going, and then people know, and Jeffro will know this because he's got mm -hmm. a family, uh, if you're going to go to the cinema, suddenly it's not a $30 ticket, it's a $70 ticket. Uh, to, so you could potentially use that. And it's probably a valid argument to say, well, if I hire it for 30 bucks, everybody gets to see it, and we've only paid 30 bucks. but if you want to go to the cinema... It's now 70, 80, 90 dollars. And of course, people buy drinks and popcorn and whatever. That's a very good point, Claire, I've got to say. I, I, I'm with you, him, Pierce. I really, really am. Um, uh, where are we? So I know there are people out there, like your, uh, your Kelvins of the world, they definitely go for physical media. And there's definitely an argument as to going for that. I mean, there's always been that mindset of saying, well, if the streaming service stops showing the show, you haven't got it. Whereas if you've got the physical media, at least you can watch it whenever you want to. Um, it's a question of whether everybody's thinking that way or people are going to go, map. Uh, I don't want it. I think Daniel, who's watching this, doesn't have any discs at all. He's all uh, a soft uh, copy sort of like streaming sort of guy. Um, now, we've got a few things here I've just got to put up. Um, so, okay, Claire, so you prefer the one episode per – sorry, MPS, what were we going to say, man? I don't know. No. Go back to those comment I forgot. No. Uh, so uh, the idea of having a show is that coming out once a week, uh, you're right, it's like the old days where it's at least you've got that anticipation of what's going on, but it's also very clever marketing because, as Jeffro said, if they all dump the whole season in one go, you'd sign up, watch the thing in one day, and you're done. So if anything, it forces people to sign up for a period of time uh, for at least a couple of months. So it's actually quite clever. Um, dude, but do you, you want to say something? That, you can do that the opposite way. You can wait till they've dropped everything. Like if you don't want True. Disney, wait till they've dropped it. It's another three or four episodes. You go onto Disney, you you use your your free thing, you watch it all, and then you don't need to do it again. So yeah, yeah. the only thing yeah. you got to watch out for is spoilers that Thank uh, you. all over the internet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So using an example, if you're watching Star Trek Discovery, you'd have to wait almost three months, four months practically, before you could watch the whole thing. By then, everybody's told you everything that's going on. I mean, for some people, they don't care, and if you can do that, 
great, you know, but most people these days is like, I can't wait for the latest and the greatest. So, uh, yeah, but it's, it's still a valid point, that's for sure. Um, all right, so you're yeah, right, ads shows they do come and go, and that is the issue. And I think all of us have had situations where you've been watching a show and then you've gone to the next season or the next, and it's just disappeared. Then you go, damn, what do I do now? So it's, it, you do wonder if at some point a streaming service will say, no, we've got it and we're going to keep it forever even if it's got a limited market because they want more people to sign up and, and be a part of it. I don't know. It's a, it's a tricky one. Um, the, only, the only ones you can guarantee that are going to be around forever are things like if it's a Netflix produced uh, production, but if it's not, then it could be sold off to some other streaming service, you know, sort of the next year. All right. There's a lot of stuff coming through here. Oh, there's actually a lot of stuff coming in here. Um, at the end of the day, go in the movies as well. Look, Hang on. At the end of the day, going to the movies is always fun. Give it 10 years of cinema we're on. Well, that's the thing. So we're talking about no. actually not what's happening. You don't agree, Jeffrey? You think cinema will always have a place, both of you two? I yep. mean, we've, we've seen it overcome many obstacles. I mean, as you said in the introduction, I mean, uh, video rental market and uh, the fact that, you know, we had television, it's, it's, it's going to be around. I mean, uh, it, it hasn't died. It's faced all the uh, adversity it possibly can. People just love the social experience. It'll grow like it has grown. So originally it used to be, you know, you go watch your serials and then they become movies and then the movies became bigger and the screens got bigger and you got IMAX and VMAX and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. And the next stage will be possibly almost like your holodeck. It'll be more three-dimensional than just watching a three-dimensional on the screen. It'll have projectors coming from the sides and doing all that. It'll have to grow with everyone else and that'll be the next... Um, generation of, of movie watching so you or it'll be that you're immersed in the actual film as a spectator somehow so but that's maybe 10 years or 20 years off but that's still the next version of where i see it sort of going the only other thing i would say is that it'll be the uh, era of the big blockbuster uh it won't be so good for the small independent movies but uh people always go see the blockbuster and the case and example was the last couple of uh uh, Marvel uh, Avengers movies where they made one billion dollars in the box office for uh, crying out loud. Um, I think it's a very, very good point that um, you're right. If you've got big, gigantic movies, you mentioned Avengers, uh, MBS mentioned Avatar. I think people, especially cinephiles, people who really love their movies will go to the cinemas. But if you release a driving Miss Daisy, it'll have no hope. Right? There's no purpose whatsoever of seeing it in the cinema. Okay, using that as an example, there are other films of that nature. And I think that's possibly where cinemas may struggle a little bit because they'll put out your driving Miss Daisies of the world and just nobody will go because I'll say, you know what, I'll just wait until it comes out on Netflix. Unless you've got, you know, you may have a small um, devoted crowd, but certainly not like we did back in the 80s where it was like, well, it's the cinema or nothing. Uh, and that was the way it went. So if there's a threat to cinemas, that is probably where it will be. But I do agree with both of you that... Uh, big, large uh, blockbuster movies will still have a place and people will still be keen to go with them. But, uh, yeah, interesting. <clears throat> well, look, in the next year or two, we will forget about what happened this year and we'll all be out doing our normal stuff. The cinema will be there. We've got a stack of films that haven't been released this year. So the first six months of next year, provided things go right, we'll be filling the cinemas because... You want to see those big films, you know, there's Black Widow, there's Wonder Woman, there's the new Bond film. Um, and you get to go with your friends and you get to hang out or you get to just be in a big room if you go by yourself, because I go by myself often. Um, you can sit in the big room, it can be loud and you don't have to disturb the neighbours, you can enjoy it and you can leave when you want. Hey, it's a very good point that's been brought up. Joe's mentioned this, they're building a cinema in Terralgan. So cinemas are still being constructed. So I guess that must be a positive sign for them. Um, and either the cinemas are thinking, well, okay, we've still got a foot to fight for our place in the world because you've got to think from the, the other side of it, are the people running the streaming services? And, like, ironically, you've got your Disneys of the world who are both producing cinematic films and stuff for their streaming, and you do wonder if at some point they swap allegiances from one side to the other side. I mean, I don't really know. Uh, or whether they think, oh, it's, just, it's, it's an idea to do both. But using Wonder Woman and Mulan as an example, it is kind of unusual. I mean, Mulan, you can, uh, as an exception, because we had the COVID thing this year, the cinemas were shut. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Uh, so let's assume it's next year, six months into next year, the COVID thing's all finished. 
if they still have this mindset of releasing something in the cinema and on the streaming service on the same day, you do have to wonder what their loyalty is because you will be thinking that somewhere in the background they'll be counting the numbers and going, well, how many people went and saw it in the cinema? How many people went and saw it on the streaming services? What are the numbers? The extra people who paid extra for it. And that may be it's like doing a bit of a um, – creating a spreadsheet of what's going to happen five or six, seven, eight years from now. Well, if you remember back in the 80s, this is how it worked. Film distribution hit the cinemas. It was on video six to 12 months later. Then it was on television two years later. Uh, 10, 15 years ago, it changed. It was in the cinemas three months after it finished its run in the cinemas. It was on DVD and blue and as Blu-ray was coming through Blu-ray. And then within 12 months, it was on television. Now we're getting to the point where you can have almost all three mediums hit the shelves at the same time. You know, you can have in the cinema, on demand and physical copy all on the same day, you know, but it doesn't take from, away from the point that people who want to go to the cinema will still go to the cinema and then you'll watch it later on, you know, on your streaming service. And then if you love it, you'll buy it on, on disc. So I, I, that's how it sort of progressed in the last 30 years. Um, is a very interesting point I want to bring up. Uh, and I agree with you, Claire, going to the purpose, the purpose of going to the cinema is the social aspect. And I totally agree with you. And I just thought of something that just occurred to me right now. If you were uh, a skeptic, okay, and you were to say, where's it all going to go? Most of the people, including us too, and most of the people watching this right now are all from a certain generation, generation X, baby boomer, Y, whatever, right? The question you've got to ask yourself is if you go to generation Z, right, the guys born in the year 2000, the people born in the year 2000 and whatever else, what would they do? Are they just saying, Nah, not interested. I can just press a button on the TV at home and watch something right there and then. And is that the future? So will it be as time goes on, the older cinephiles, the devotees of the cinema still stick with the movies, but all the younger people stay away. And the other thing is what Claire just said, it was a social thing. Suddenly that's gone now. They, on their phones, and they're all SMSing each other, or what do you call it, FaceTiming or whatever, saying, well, I'm watching this right now. They're watching that right now. And they're actually sitting commenting on the movie they're both watching on their respective screens and i actually think that has the potential and even though it's impossible very difficult for us to comprehend i think it has the potential of gaining traction as we get further into it purely because as we know with a lot of especially younger people who are all on the the now world i can't be fagged going to the cinemas i could press a button and bang there it is and charge it to the folks credit card or something and i think that has um the future I don't know. That's a that's a bit of a worry. So, what yeah. do you reckon? Well, hang on. You know, I tend to see differently because I mean, you will find that people get sick of being in the one place watching something. They want to get out from that place. So, there's nothing better than cinemas to be able to sort of get you off your ass, out and um, and, and active. So, sitting in front of a TV all day or a computer all day, that's going to start to wear thin. So, you've got to have an outlet to go watch it somewhere else okay sure. and we already yeah. did the thing with the halloween special where we sat here and and talked with something showing surely that's happening out in the world you know people are having zoom meetings and watching films together and all that sort of stuff you know it shouldn't be that hard to comprehend however it depends on the quality of what they're watching and if they're enjoying that you know if you're across the other side of the world from someone then that's that's fine but if you're around the corner you might as well um jump on a couch or Go to a cinema. Well, because there's two facets to be mindful of, the people who are making these things and releasing them and the people who are watching them. Because in the end, the people who are making these things and releasing them will focus primarily on where the big the big bucks are, right, if, uh, if, if you will. And if they say, oh, look, if we put this on a streaming service, we'll gu be guaranteed an extra 150% uptake than we would if we stick it in the cinema because with the cinema, you've actually got to get the, the physical location and da-da-da. And... And I think that um, it has the potential of causing a bit of an upset, uh, 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 throw the balance of the force out, if you will, because uh, for younger people, as I mentioned, someone here, um, Claire said they're having online watching parties. And I actually think that that actually is, if there's a threat, that'll be it. Because younger people, especially those even born today, you know, like the really younger people, and Jeff Rose kid would be like this to a large degree, to them, the cinemas are this place that's way over there somewhere. They've got to get in the car. They've got to get down there, get the ticket, sit down, blah, 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 and then drive home again, whereas they can just go walk into the next room. And, of course, the quality, depending on the size of the TV and the sound system, might be enough. 
And uh, I think if there's going to be a problem with um, the future of the cinema, that's where it'll be. Oh, well, that, that, means that, that, that means that cinema rooms need to be better and either projectors or TVs. We've got 8K televisions now, you know, 100, what was the last one? 8K, 100 inch TV, you know, how are you going to see everything that's happening on that size screen if you're watching a big blockbuster like, uh, I don't know, let's say Avatar, for instance, you yeah. know, are you going to, are you going to see all that sort of stuff? Whereas when you're in the, in the theater, you can actually get to view things that, that, that are quite small and yeah. Yeah, I, I get, I, I hear you, and I do like this concept uh, from Michelle. Uh, yeah, it all depends on how they're raised, and I totally agree with you, Michelle, that uh, if a child has been raised with the cinema in mind, and that is the uh, the ultimate place to go, then they'll appreciate it. I'm my concern is that a lot of people won't, and it's going to get worse as it gets. So there's no there's no stopping it now, right? The damage is done. I mean, all the Netflixes, the stands, the Amazons, they're all here to stay. They're not going anywhere, and I, it's not going to improve as time goes on, and as People then realise, well, hey, I can just like sit in front of the couch, come home from work, press a button, and I don't have to leave to go anywhere. Oh, the latest movie or blah blah blahs coming out, right? Imagine using it as an example. James Bond is coming out next year, right? As you said. Yeah. So what would happen if Charlie comes home from work, Charlie or Charling, whatever? They sit down, they go, oh, look, for thirty bucks, I can have the whole family watch James Bond, and I don't even have to leave the couch. I'll order for pizza, get sent over to the house. It's pissing down rain outside. I don't even have to leave the house. You're right. Most people. All of us would say the cinema is the ultimate experience. But for sheer convenience in the lazy world that we're in these days where you use a phone to turn the damn light on and off when you can't go over and hit the switch anymore, um, I would argue that there could be a, a real shift in mindset. And people go, you know what, it's good enough for me. It'll do the job. And yeah, uh, I, um, I don't see that happening because the studios who have invested all those millions and millions of dollars uh, will not let that happen. I mean, they're only just doing that a little bit now because of the COVID situation. <clears throat> but once we're clear of COVID, they're not going to let people watch it on television um, straight away like that for at least, as uh, MPS said, for at least six months after it's had a good run in the cinemas. I, I hear you, uh, and I'm going to mention this from uh, they tried selling the Bond movie. That was next year. What happens five years from now? you know, down the track when the dust has settled and the COVID's all finished and all the rest of it, and they do realise there's a market for it, especially if it's a film, a big movie aimed at a younger audience. I'm not saying it will or it won't. I'm just putting it out there to say I personally think that uh, it, it could be a bit iffy. Um, Car uh, Carol's written this entire thing. Sorry, MPS, within a sec. Two Cinema Lovers and Showbiz. Uh, yeah, you would know this one, Jeffro, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There was a cinema uh, that was opened up about two years ago, so... Going back to that analogy, the fact they're still building cinemas. And I think one of the main reasons is because we're expanding as a population and it's a bit like McDonald's. You know, you don't want to drive too far for something you want. So they're building these little uh, niche cinemas that have, you know, smaller cinemas that uh, are just literally, you know, a couple of kilometres down the road. Um Ads, I agree with you, Charlie and Charlene, whatever it might be needed, but we've all done it. Every single one of us watching this and us three here have come home, turn on what's on Netflix, what's on Stan, what's on Amazon, what's on this, what's on that. Has it even crossed their mind? I mean, admittedly, this year's been different, but last year was similar uh, and next year will be similar where we've just said, hey, this is pretty handy. I mean, it'd be very interesting to see how many people have actually said, yes, I will go and put on a DVD or a Blu-ray or physical media rather than just scrolling through and having a bit of a search so it's uh it is so easy now and you don't have to leave the couch and unfortunately we've all done mm. it we're all, we're all victims of it so we're actually supporting to a degree the, yeah. the the monster that is before us and uh it's not a bad thing it's just the way the world is and i know i've done this plenty of time so uh i i i think that even now people are fighting back because i mean we're seeing such a prevalence uh amount of people going to the drive-ins because people are fighting back they don't want to sit at home and watch these things they'd rather go to the drive-in and uh yep. and see it there rather than home see the next step of the evolution is the fact that all the free-to-air st tv stations have now released their own online services seven plus ten plus and sbs on demand and all that so they've all twigged that free-to-air is not the future for them they then are trying to get their hand in the marketplace. And even though I think it's all for free, you can just got to sign up and whatever. But even they have gotten registered. It's like, okay, uh, people are going to watch this episode on TV 
Some will, free to air with all the commercials, but then no, 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 they'll just watch it online later on and it'll be on for months and months and months. And I've done that, right? We've missed episodes of a certain show. We'll go back and watch them online. So we've done that here and I'm sure some of you guys have too. So mm-hmm. they've now embraced that technology. Uh, and free to air, you think free to air at it, everybody will be saying, no, we don't want to follow the streaming services because we are free to air. This is what we do. But, you know, you sort of think if they're starting to cave, I don't know, sort of just, it's food for thought. That's for sure. And, of course, a lot of TV shows now are being made not for free-to-air distribution. They're being made specifically for online streaming service creation. Netflix, of course, are producing their own shows and some of these other companies. So you won't see them on free-to-air no matter what. So there's an an extra encouragement to um, go online to watch these things. So that's just dangling carrots. And if you say, well, I'm not going to join the streaming services, oh, my favourite franchise of all time, is now only going to be online. Well, hell, I've got to join online. It's the only solution. So it's going to be a hard one to get away from uh, as time goes on. I'll give you a good example of that. Um, The Netflix uh, movie, The Christmas Chronicles. Basically, if you thought, no, I don't want to see that on the streaming service, I'm going to wait for the physical media. Well, bad luck. It never got released on physical media. So you have to see it on Netflix or not see it at all. Um, it's an interesting one, William. Uh, you don't have a stream. You watch a lot of YouTube instead. YouTube is sort of like the grey area, really, because YouTube, by and large, is free. But they do actually have a service that you can pay for, which, ironically, is a streaming service. So you could say, look, I'll just spend my life watching YouTube. But, I mean, if you get the latest episode of whatever, you're clearly not going to be able to see it on YouTube unless you sign up. So YouTube do actually have their extra bit. For those people are, mm-hmm. excuse me, prepared to pay for it. Um uh, yeah, that's I, this is what I'm thinking, Claire. It, sorry, MPS within a sec. It'll last through our generation, but yeah, I don't know. I would argue that 40 years from now, and they, they won't, none of us are going to care about it. But I think 40 years from now, or maybe in 30 years from now, 20 years even, it's going to be a different world. So, MPS, you want to say something, mate? Well, I think the streaming services will have their time for now until something happens and Netflix buys out Bing or and Amazon buys out Stan and all that sort of stuff. And then it will become like the big, you know, the CBS, how CBS has bought out Channel 10 over here. I think that'll occur in the next 10 years or so, five to 10 years, because everyone, you know, um, eBay's been bought out by someone and YouTube's been bought out by someone and Facebook's been bought out and all that sort of stuff. So that'll probably happen. As for having the cinemas around in 40 years time, I still think it will be there. It may be a slightly different thing. Like I said before, I think you'll have to update the technology you know, you'll have to update the, the experience for people to want to be able to do that in an area where you can't do it at home. You know, you can't go and see a film that may have you interacting or be sitting in a in a point of view where, you know, the actors are walking past you in a you know, hologram or, or that sort of thing, which then eventually leads to a holodeck type experience, which becomes so far down the road that none of us are going to see that. So that's. It's an interesting point, Michelle. Once upon a time, we only had four TV stations. Then we got the streaming services for people who are stuck at home legitimately. And you're right. It has just opened up a massive world for a lot of people. And for that reason, there's definitely a market for an older audience who can't go to cinemas and, and whichever else. So, yeah, and for them, it would be like the greatest salvation of all time. Uh, I agree with Claire. Free-to-air uh, requires advertising. And, of course, um, if you've ever watched free-to-air TV shows, the commercials are an absolute pain in the ass. So it's enough to turn off. Actually, it's almost like they're trying to get you to turn off uh, free-to-air. And I must admit, it, it's extremely frustrating. I mean, there are shows that they show on TV that on free-to-air that don't really show anywhere else. But for the most part, you've got to be very damn patient uh, with free-to-air, even though once upon a time it was just, just the norm. Um, You'll find probably in the streaming services too that, and I do this, I go through prime amazon prime and i go i'm not in the mood for anything i'll go to netflix i'm not in the mood for anything i'll go through the next one i'm not in the mood for anything and end up watching something on tv because it's just on again you know it's a 19th repeat of of um fifth element or something and i'll watch that because i just can't be bothered watching anything else because i'm not in the mood for it all now ads has a, got a very good point the problem is uh that there are so many services right how many is too many right and I think we've all been in the situation. Once upon a time, it was Foxtel. If you didn't have Foxtel, you missed out on all this crap, right? Uh, if anything, Foxtel was the precursor to what we got now. Now it's a case of, well, I want to watch Star Wars, I've got to have Disney. I want to watch Star Trek, I've got to go to 
Netflix. Yeah. I want to watch this other show. I've got to go to Stan. Now mm -hmm. I've got to go to Apple Plus, right? Apple Plus, a classic example, uh, For All Mankind comes out. For all first four episodes are free. You want to watch the rest, you've got to pay for it. It's like, well, who wants to do that? Amazon has got a service. They're all coming out of the woodwork, and it's hard. It's like using this analogy, and Jeff Rowe will know this one like absolutely perfectly. When videotape first came out, every second shop was a video store. They just sprang up overnight because it was the thing of the world at the time. The market was there. People wanted videos, so what do you do? You open a video store. They didn't last, most of them, nearly all of them, but that was the thing. So does that mean that next week it'll be – Free streaming service. The week after that, it's you know, Charlie's streaming service. Then we've got another one. And then you'll have 18 of the damn things, and each one will have something that you want to watch your show on. And you go, well, who's going to know who? Who says, well, okay, I'm going to subscribe to every single one of them, or they're going to be very selective as to what they do. And that, I think, is the biggest killer of all. And before you know it, you'll be spending 100 200 bucks a month. And as Jeffro said earlier, you're only paying a tiny amount per service, but multiply them X amount of times. It all adds up. And I think we're all going to be caught in that situation when you realize, mate, I've got no money left in my bank account. What's going on? Shit, I'm subscribed to 17 services, you know, maybe a dozen, whatever. And it's like, they're just chewing up all my money. And then, of course, as you said, MPS, are you watching enough material to justify the expense? And you go, oh, cancel the service. And then next week they release a show or a movie that's on that service only. Got to resubscribe again. And it's, it's a real trap, and I think it's going to bring a lot of people undone, especially in the days, this day and age, where there's no cash, it's all cards and online transfers and money exchanges. I reckon has it's it's got whiskers on it. It really has. So there you go. Um, I just want to do one last thing. Uh, what's his name? Um, Colin had said that uh, CBS, who has Star Trek, they're talking about, like, what Disney – it would not surprise me in the slightest that if CBS or those people – produce a new streaming service, another one, which houses every Star Trek series ever made, assuming they've got the rights to the there movie, are. movies and stuff. That wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. So, All uh, the series, yeah. all the Star Trek series are on Amazon Prime, so they're already there. Uh, they so, all they probably get shifted over. That have all the rights yeah. to be bought, and they go, if you want Star Trek, it's like Star Wars. There's only one place to get Star Wars now, right? So once upon a time, Rogue One, and that was on Netflix. Not anymore. It's all on Disney, so you'll find logically with star trek such having such a large catalog uh it'll happen what would happen jeffro here's a question for you what would happen if suddenly overnight and this is a bit of you have to sort of open your mind a little bit on this one doctor who went to a, a dedicated bbc streaming service i mean all of it every single episode that they've still got and all the new stuff it really came out is. it is on a dedicated streaming service uh it's okay. one that's called brit box and it started about uh, two weeks ago here in australia it was uh, previously in the uh, US and the UK, and their their big bragging thing is that they have every single known Doctor Who uh, story on there. So uh, big, okay. big uh, thing amongst the uh, Doctor Who community here. Is that so right? Been received pub, uh, received positively or negatively, or they irk the fact that you've got to subscribe to yet another streaming service? I mean, it's one of those things that most of the fans I know either have. Uh, their own copies because they're buying the discs uh, or they've seen it enough times on uh, Foxtel and all that that uh, I don't know if it's really sort of been enthusiastically received because we've we've had our, our good share of Doctor Who. So it's not as if it's something that's been missing out of our lives for uh, several years. There's a truckload of it on uh, DVD and, and as I said, other content we've seen before. But... Uh, yeah, well, currently Fox Doctor is. Who's. Sorry, I was going to say currently Doctor Who's playing at ridiculous o'clock in the morning on Channel Two or Channel Twenty Three, mm. I think it is. So, yeah, and they're showing guess, three or four episodes at a time. If you like um, us, you know, you've got a PBR. You just set the uh, the time, and you you get to see it sort of uh, uh, whenever you want to watch it. Yeah, I like this comment from William. Civic Video closed last month. Ah, uh, see we. Us old timers remember the video store revolution when it came out. Oh, it's just absolutely fantastic. So, but uh, unfortunately, that was a, a, a thing of the past. And, um, Doctor, yeah. And, uh, who was it? Uh, yeah, you're right, Daniel. They're on Netflix and movies are on Amazon. Eventually, yeah. if, if such a channel opened, they would buy all the rights and they would have it all stuck in one place. So, you know, that's of, as of today. Um, this year has been, as I said earlier, an absolute win for the streaming services. That, whether you like them or not, People went to them. And, of course, if, if you're not like, hang on, where are we? Uh, William's got 8,000 DVDs uh, and Blu-rays. 
uh, what do you do? You say, well, I've got to watch them because I've got nothing else in my life. Everything um, is boring and batshit. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Sorry, Daniel, you're a bit late on that one. Um, and can I handle a bit? Well, that's a good point, actually, uh, Kelvin, about, um, yes, everything hinges on your bandwidth, and that's why the NBN is so important for everybody now. The last thing you want is, got, oh, beauty, I'm going to watch all these shows on Netflix, and then you suddenly discover your data is all expired and your show's not going to run. And I think I've had that happen to me once when my data expired with two days to go. And I'll tell you what, it's like, oh, my, the world's coming to an end. It was like 20th century living. It was horrendous. Didn't enjoy it at all. And you are right. It's a very important thing. And, of course, you would think the more content that comes out and if they produce it in 4K, 8K or whatever else, you're going to need even more bandwidth just to be able to watch these things. And, um, yeah, it's sort of an interesting sort of problem, what's for sure. So, uh, yeah, I will. We'll point out one thing, though, the cracks are starting to show. So uh, one of the things that officially wrapped up for good uh, this week was a streaming service called Quibi. Now, the idea behind it is that you would actually watch it on your phone. So you, you, the idea was that all the kids would be watching this made for uh, exclusive content, and it bombed big time. So it was a subscription service. Um, they put millions and millions of dollars into it and it only lasted six months so uh, there's a sign that you know these things are not infallible and the other thing too is that there's a lot of really specialist stream services that half the time people don't even know exist i mean if you didn't know brit britbox existed then uh, it would just pass you by there's one that's dedicated to only showing australian movies that's out there as well uh so uh yeah there's, there's a lot of uh streaming services that are out there that aren't the majors that people just don't realize i know one of the big headaches if you're in the business of producing uh shows a lot of people trying to produce uh new tv shows to sell to streaming services we use netflix as an example um and i mean if you get a salt a show sold on netflix it's like oh that's the greatest thing ever providing people who are watching it actually are subscribed to netflix and they find it and they actually do watch it as opposed to putting something on free to wear which was at least guaranteed to get you some airtime. uh so i wouldn't be surprised if a whole lot of programs just come and go and just get disappeared on, and they disappear under the weight of all these new products that are, are coming and going so there's a lot of content there's a lot of material out there and there's probably a bit too much especially these days you know because things are being produced on such a regular basis that i wouldn't be surprised if some really great movies and tv shows just get forgotten and how many people do we know say oh have you been watching blah and they go no i've never even heard of blah where is blah and they go it's on this streaming service well i'm not supposed to subscribe to that so no is the answer to that question and it's like yeah well what do you do then you just miss out and you go oh, is um is vagrant queen it's on sbs on demand it's streaming right there but i mean who knows it's there yeah yeah so, uh, and that's that's the that's what I was referring to with for all mankind. You say, well, I'm not subscribed to uh, Apple Plus, so I just haven't seen past episode four, and I'm not going to. So it's like, oh, I just miss out, and I just move on, and it is what it is. So there you go. Very good stuff. Uh, MPS, did you want to say anything, man? I think you might find that eventually this will all change anyway, and they may even swap out or chuck this stuff on on DVD or Blu-ray, like Travelers, which was on Netflix. That's out on blu-ray but it's only the first two seasons it's only a three seasons show so you would think that once they're they've had their time with it they'll put it out for those who are, are still sort of buying content but when they punch through a, a series and they go we've got this brand new series it's doing really good and then three four seasons later they they just turn around and go we're cutting it and, then, and everyone goes well why because you were doing so well with it and all of a sudden you've cut this this great show and if it comes out on on um uh hard media then that's that's good but uh yeah we'll lose a lot of this stuff until they decide in five years time like what disney do with their films to bring it back out and recycle it um yeah that is actually a very telling point as to you'll know that the world is changing if the sales of dvds and blu-rays and players both of them start dropping off I and mean, we were seeing the death of videotape and video recorders so it is feasible that they're just like saying well we're producing the material but no one's buying it anymore and i guess that will be the sign and there are economists out there somewhere keeping tabs on everything, all your JB Hi-Fi dudes who are ordering all this stuff in. They go, well, we've ordered all the latest movies and TV shows, but no one's buying them. Why? Because they're watching them on streaming services or they don't care. And I guess that'll be the sign. Because I wouldn't be surprised if at some point DVD and Blu-ray players just stop not being um, – people have got them, have got them, but nobody will want them. I, I'd be very intrigued to see who's actually running out buying brand-new 
DVD and Blu-ray players these days. It would be uh, one, two. Yeah, but you're, you're of our generation, right? You've got a lot of discs and all that. I'm talking about, once again, younger people or people with brand new families and whatever else, and they go, yep, no worries. Uh, or they just go, no, we don't need the technology. I actually knew a friend of mine. Um, she didn't even have a DVD or Blu-ray player back in 2012. She was all soft copy only, right? And this was in the downloading days and whatever else. But even then, and that was a sign of the times. I couldn't believe it. I had to give her a DVD of something. And she said, I can't play it because I don't have a player. But in 2012, in 2012, I couldn't believe it. So she was ahead of the curve even back then. Anyway, if um, if, there, if there's a further a final thought that goes with this, right? And I did this in the promo. And I said, you know, the song once said that video killed the radio star from the Buggles from 1980, right? Ironically... So, yeah, it's a video killed the radio star, DVD killed the video star, Blu-ray killed the DVD star, streaming services killed the Blu-ray star, and funnily enough, radio is still going strong. Mm. Fancy that. Who, who would have seen that in 1980? So there you go. Um, well, if we, all right. what? if we look at it, vinyl's coming back. So who's to oh. say... That, know. you know, yeah. we're not going to get video, obviously, but who's to say that, that DVD, at least, or Blu-ray won't be around for quite some time? Uh, yeah, you're right, Daniel. Most players, uh, consoles have Blu-ray players. Uh, in, don't be surprised at some point the games become soft copy only and the Blu-ray player part won't be necessary. So just purely because of the physical construction of the media and to save costs, everything is about saving money, right? So uh, keep that in mind, kiddies. Very good. All right, so we're going to sign off. So next week's our last episode. At the very least, make sure you tune in for that. It'll be a bit of a hoot and a holler. And, uh, but in the interim, make sure you all <gasps> stay nerdy, okay? Stay nerdy. Okay.